Hi, this is Michelle Wasser. I'm going to be discussing mental retardation today. What is mental retardation? Most states follow the IDEA 04's definition, but many prefer the one adopted in 2002 by the American Association on Mental Retardation. The IDEA's definition is that mental retardation means significant, sub-average, general intellectual functioning existing concurrently with deficits in adaptive behavior and manifested during the developmental period that adversely affects a child's educational performance. The, A -M -A the AAMR says that mental retardation is a disability characterized by significant limitations both in intellectual functioning and in, adap in adaptive behavior as expressed in conceptual, social, and practical adaptive skills. This disability originates before age 18. Some characteristics of mental retardation are problems with cognition, problems with adaptive behavior, and the need for supports to sustain independence. Cognition. The most important characteristic of people with mental retardation is impaired cognitive ability. Learning new skills and storing and retrieving information is difficult, and memory is often impaired. In addition, trouble acquiring knowledge through incidental learning often occurs. Adaptive behavior. Adaptive behaviors are skills needed for one to live independently. They are the collection of conceptual, social, and practical skills that people have learned in order to function in their everyday lives. These skills include daily activities such as eating, dressing, mobility, preparing meals, using the phone, managing money, and also housekeeping. The need for supports. There are four types of supports that a person could need. Natural supports, which are supports from your own resources, family, friends, and neighbors. Non-paid supports, which are neighborhood and community supports. Generic supports, which are services such as public transportation and human service systems. And specialized supports, which are disability specific, such as human services delivered to families of children with disabilities. Intellectual functioning. The 2002 AAMR definition states that people with mental retardation have intellectual functioning significantly below average or below levels attained by 97% of the general population. The level of functioning can be determined by clinical judgment or by an IQ test. An individual must score at least two standard deviations below the mean. The statistical distribution can be represented as a bell-shaped curve called the normal curve. The 2002 AAMR definition uses IQ scores to partially explain mental retardation by using a cutoff score of about 70 and below. In this diagram, the shaded region represents those that are mentally retarded. This is where their IQ scores would fall in the normal distribution. IQ ranges. 50 to 69 is mild mental retardation which means that the child has learning dif difficulties, is able to work, can maintain good social relationships, and contribute to society. 35 to 49 is moderate mental retardation, which means that the child exhibits marked developmental delays during childhood, has some degree of independence and self-care, possesses adequate communication and academic skills, requires varying degrees of support to live and work in the community. 20 to 34 means that the child has severe mental retardation, has continuous need for supports. Under 20 is profound mental retardation, which means that the child demonstrates severe limitations in self-care, continence, communication, and mobility, and requires continuous and intensive supports. There are three common causes of mental retardation, Down syndrome, Fragile X syndrome, and Fetal Alcohol syndrome. The, AAM, the AAMR divides the causes into three groups by time of onset. Prenatal, which is what happens before birth, like genetics and heredity, drug exposure during pregnancy. Perinatal, which is during the birthing process birth injuries due to oxygen deprivation, umbilical cord accidents, and head trauma, and postnatal, which means that, which are causes that occur after birth, like child abuse and neglect, environmental toxins, and accidents. There are major causes throughout the three periods of onset. Genetic, like our, which are disorders such as fragile X syndrome, Down syndrome, and fetal, phenylketonuria, or PKU. Toxins, which are poisons in the environment, increased rates of ADHD, learning disabilities, and even autism are due to some interplay of genetics and environmental factors. Fetal alcohol syndrome, which is caused by a mother's drinking too much alcohol while pregnant. Low birth weight, child abuse and neglect, and discrimination and bias. Prevention measures. Each year, 9,000 cases of mental retardation are prevented via the measles and HIV vaccines. 1,250 cases prevented, are prevented because of newborn screening for PKU and congenital hypothyroidism. Education and access are prevention measures. Public education programs can also help pre pregnant women understand the importance of staying healthy. Testing the expected mother, analyzing the risk factor of the family, screening infants, and cre creating positive nurturing and rich home and school environments are also positive prevention measures. Assessment. 
the early identification period, which, which is when children are identified with disabilities early in life, receive special early intervention programs specified in their IFSPs. Others are identified during preschool years because of a delay in speech, language, or motor skills. The pre-referral stage is mental retardation affects children in all areas. There's an overall delay. This step requires teachers to get all the information they can gather about, about students' classroom performance. They must use validated practices for every skill area of concern, monitor students' performance to determine under what conditions they learn the best. The identification process. IQ scores are not enough to classify someone as mentally retarded. Looking at their adaptive behavior is a hallmark of the identification process. Assessment of adaptive skills is typically done through interviews and observation. Assessment of adaptive areas test that en enables the examiner to convert scores to age equivalents across adaptive skill areas. Supports intensity scale, developed by a AAMR, measures the intensities of supports that each person needs to participate fully in community life. Early intervention. Early intervention is important to children with mental retardation. It can limit the severity of mental retardation or prevent it. Inclusive education is more of a reality in preschools across the nation than at elementary, middle, and high schools. If you look at this chart, um, it, it, the title of it is Prevalence Rates for Mental Retardation, Developmental Delay, and Autism for Eight-Year-Olds for the years 1993 to 2007. If you look at the, blue, at the blue part of the graph, that's what represents mental retardation. You can see that it's decreasing over time from the year 1993 to 2007. This is probably due to all the prevention measures that are here today and the education that families receive. Teaching students with mental retardation. Validated practices. Some children with mental retardation need access to, different, to a different or additional curriculum to achieve full participation in the community. The functional curriculum is one that focuses on life skills such as having a job, owning a car, and personal relationships. This curriculum teaches skills that are necessary in everyday life. Teaching self-determination, which is how to make choices and advocate for oneself, and task analysis, which is breaking skills down into teachable units, is helpful because the results of the process provide a guide to sequence instruction. Some teaching tips include select learning objectives that are specific to the skill being taught, gain students' attention before beginning instruction, actively, in actively involve the students in the lesson, teach with real materials or provide concrete examples, ensure that the first skill taught is mastered, point out similarities among different skills, provide many opportunities for practice, and reward instances of generalization from one skill to another. The role of technology plays an important part with students with mental retardation. Email is now an important part of school and daily life for students with mental retardation thanks to a program called eBuddies. This program has helped students with mental retardation connect with each other across the nation and facilitates the development of friendships between people with and without disabilities. A calculator is another example of how technology can help a student with disabilities by allowing them to do simple arithmetic tasks. The result of the technology is better is better access to and participation in the community.